1440, Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press. What's interesting to note here is that it wouldn't have been possible had it not been for innovations in paper manufacturing, ink technology, and believe it or not, eyeglasses. So it was an aggregation of invention that allows Gutenberg to revolutionize mass communication. 300 years later, it's in every city. 1704, we see the first advertisement printed in a newspaper. In 1836, the New York Sun prints an article about people with purple wings and blue goat-like creatures on the moon. It boosts their subscriber base from 8,000 to 19,000 subscribers, allowing them to surpass the Times of London as the number one print publication of its time. As communication starts to expand, you see the adoption of radio. In 1923, you see television begin to evolve, right? And so inside of this modern media, we're being immersed inside of the storyline, specifically to sell us products. Soap was the first one. Soap operas, right, were invented to sell consumer-driven products to housewives who were at home watching TV. It was part of the strategy, right? And what this means is that fake news is nothing new. This is Edward Bernays. He's the grandfather, the great-grandfather of propaganda, of PR, right? As we start to see this technology evolve, we start to see them using the psychology of our behavior to turn that into consumer-driven buying decisions. We see the growth of advertising from, uh, what is it, $3 billion industry to a $300 plus billion industry today. But the model has been unchanged, right? Essentially, advertising is gather as many eyeballs as you can and then rent that audience to others for a fee, right? Which has led to uh, an interesting stat. 2017 was the first time that digital advertising surpassed television advertising, right? And so what is the difference between a screen on the TV or a screen in my hand or a screen anywhere? What we're seeing is a battle for our attention. Right? We've got these perfectly curated feeds of information to which we have all become addicted. And this battle for our attention is leading to a significant amount of noise, a, sig a significant amount of mistrust in all of these communication mechanisms that we use to interact on a regular basis. It's changing the psychology of our culture, but it's not really driving sales just yet. 92% of us are connected through the internet, but online spending as it relates to e-commerce is still in the just barely crossing double digits, right? So why is that? Why are we not doing as much business as you might think? It's because we don't trust the machine, right? Because you're advertising us to us. We're, it's like dealing with a used car salesman. Nobody wants to deal with them, and now our, our media is turning into the used car salesman that's always trying to pressure us in a certain direction to buy a certain thing to do a certain thing, right? But things are changing really fast, and we don't really know what's coming. I, how, how do you keep up with all of these changes, with the algorithmic uh, advancements in advertising and social tracking and privacy, et cetera? How do you, how do you deal with these things? Right? As it continues to grow, as artificial intelligence comes through, you start to see that society is moving at the speed of information, as opposed to moving at the pace of people. And so we're going to start seeing people get run over. Right? Things are going to be moving faster than most of us can actually keep up, because our brains don't think exponentially, right? We're not able to scale our thinking powers. And if you think about the roads, the major highway systems, there were no cities there before they built the highways, right? The highways were there for a while before you started to see the growth of these beautiful cities and of this big industry. Well, the internet is the new highway. What are the cities that we're going to see grow over the next 100 years, over the next 50, 100 years, right? And it's changing the way we work. It's changing the way we interact because we each want to own our own piece of that digital pie. Right? We each want to hold on to whatever we can out of this, so we're all going to become media companies and the purpose of competing for those attention. Remember, it's a competition for eyeballs. It's a competition for attention. This is one minute on the Internet. Right? And so the competition for attention for eyeballs is fierce, and now we're all participating even at an individual level. We're all becoming media companies, and it creates so much noise. And so how do you deal with the noise? How do you start to filter through some of that? You're seeing Facebook, you're seeing Twitter, you're seeing Patreon, you're seeing YouTube. They're all starting to censor, turn people off. Well, what does that mean for our intellectual freedom? What does that mean for our rights as individuals? The things that made the country great, right? The, the, the things that got us to the place we are. How long can we continue to give away our intellectual capital to these companies and expect to call ourselves free? To expect that we can maintain our individual freedom or our liberty as a society while we give away the things that power the machines, right? They're farming our creativity and they're not sharing in the cash crop. So we have a choice to make. Do we let Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc., continue to make, milk that cow? Or do we do something a little bit different? Do we start a creative revolution? Do we start empowering the people that power these machines to make money off of that system? And what does that look like? What does that infrastructure look like? What does local media look like in that world? 
What does fake news, like maybe fake news doesn't exist in that world. Because we will face a, a battle over the next 10 years, but it won't be a bloody war. It's going to be a battle of attention, a battle of wallets, and a battle of behavior. And it's each, up to each of us to figure out what side of that battle you're going to be on. My name is Ryan Martorado. Thank you.